If you're looking for a weekend getaway from Sydney, this list of top 20 destinations in New South Wales will have something to suit you. I'm Lisa from Australian travel and migration blog dreamingofdanender.com and I've lived in Sydney since 2016. I've spent lots and lots of time exploring the coastline as well as the inland areas and country towns, so here are my favourite 20 trips from Sydney. If you want to read through it, I'll link to my blog post below on this and that has links to all the recommended accommodation options for each location. Number one is Watson's Bay. Watson's Bay sits at the end of a peninsula. If you head east from the city, it's south of the river and it's a really nice seaside location with lots of restaurants and cafes. It's really popular with day trips. You can either get there by bus from the city, which takes about an hour, or you can get the ferry for the scenic ride. That takes about 25 minutes. As soon as you get off the wharf, you'll see beaches either side of you and a few restaurants and a fish and chip shop and a park. If you head to the right facing the land when you get off the ferry, you'll come to a nice little beach and a swimming area that's netted off. There's also a nice cafe in the library there. If you head to the left when you get off the ferry, you'll pass a few little beaches and then you can get on the walk to the lighthouse, which is really popular. So you'll pass Camp Cove Beach, which is a nice big popular beach. You'll also pass a nudist beach when you do the walk, so just be ready for that view um, and then you'll come to the lighthouse you go on a really nice sort of coastal walk um, along the edge of the cliffs there and my top tip for Watson's Bay this is something that a lot of people miss when you get off the ferry there's a park called Robertson Park and if you walk up through that park to the top you come to what's called the gap so you're on a narrow peninsula so if you look on the other side of the gap you've got really lovely sheer drops down the cliff so you'll have all the waves crushing in and then if you look the other way because you're elevated you can see all the way across to the city and you get this amazing skyline if you go there at sunset it's a really really beautiful view Number two is Narrabeen, which is on Sydney's northern beaches. That takes about 50 minutes by bus or 40 minutes by car from the city. Narrabeen really feels like a holiday place. It's a narrow strip of land between the ocean and the lagoon. There's a holiday park there and you can swim in sort of part of the lagoon where it opens out into the ocean. There's also a really nice hotel called Narrabeen Sands and a few little restaurants. You can do a really, really nice walk around the lagoon that takes about two hours and it's a really popular picnic spot. You can also cycle around it or hire kayaks. Number three is one of my favourites. This is Bundina. It's a little village at the very top of the Royal National Park. To get there, you can get a train from the city to Cronulla and then get a really cute little vintage ferry across the water. It takes about an hour and 45 minutes from the city to get there. It's a really beautiful village. It's really, really leafy and small. There's only a, a really small strip of cafes and there is an IGA there as well. There's quite a few beaches for such a small place. There's a really big one called Jibbon Beach and there's one called Hordens Beach where the ferry comes in too. You can do a lovely walk to Mayan Bar as well, the village next to it. You can also go camping at Bonnie Vale Campground, that's what I did a few years ago. You can also get onto some hikes through the Royal National Park. You can go to Wedding Cake Rock, that's a really famous location to hike to. And once a month they have an art trail on there. It's a really uh, artistic community and lots of artists live there so once a month they open up their homes and you can actually go in and see where they paint and see their galleries it's really really lovely. Number four is Ostinma. this is a beachside suburb just south of the Royal National Park so it's down towards Wollongong it's a really lovely drive there that takes about an hour and 20 minutes from the city so if you come off the motorway and take the Grand Pacific Drive you should definitely stop at Bald Hill Lookout because you can look all the way down the coastline and you can look over the Seacliff Bridge, which is really famous. And then you'll also drive over the Seacliff Bridge. So that's a bridge that kind of snakes over the water. It's really, really cool. There's quite a few lovely sort of suburbs down along this strip, but Ostama has a nice choice of cafes and shops. It's got a really lovely big beach and it's got ocean pools as well. And you can do a walk up to Sublime Point Lookout, which is it's very short, but it's very, very steep. I did that. When I stayed down there, I camped at Bulleye Beach Tourist Park, which was really lovely. It's really beachside, so I'll link to that in my blog post as well. 
Number five is to go to Wollongong. This is the third largest city in New South Wales and you can get there by train or by car, which takes around an hour and a half from Sydney City. The city of Wollongong itself, I would say, isn't that amazing, but the scenery around it really is. So I do think it's a great location for a weekend away from Sydney and it's so close, it's very easy to get to. You've got lots and lots of beaches and the city itself is really, really beachfront. And then behind it, you've got the Illawarra Escarpment. So you've got this really beautiful kind of green backdrop it's really really pretty and to the south of Wollongong you do have quite an industrial view but if you go on walks and go to beaches north of Wollongong it's actually really pretty and you can really see for miles and miles it's amazing I would also go to the Botanic Gardens they're really pretty and they're right next to the university which has a lovely campus and you can also go to a temple there which is lovely Number six is Terrigal on the central coast. This takes about an hour and a half to drive to from Sydney. It's north of Sydney. And I would say it's one of the livelier places on the central coast. So I think it would be a great weekend for a group of friends if you want to go out. There's lots of restaurants, cafes, lots of bars and nightlife. And it's all really, really beachfront. So it's got a really like proper holiday feel to it. It's also got a great beach and you can do some nice little walks as well and have some really lovely views from the coastline. Number seven is the entrance. This is also on the central coast, but it's on the more northern part of the central coast. I think this would be great for families. It's got really beautiful scenery and you've got Lake Tuggera and where the lake comes out into the ocean, you've got this really swirling white sand and turquoise water. It's really, really beautiful. There's also lots of pelicans there and every day they do a pelican feeding show. So that would be great to take kids to. There's loads and they get really close to you there absolutely huge and the coastline is amazing as well so you can just drive up and down the coastline and visit really beautiful beaches and do lovely walks as well weekend getaway number eight is Kayama I really really like Kayama it's in south coast New South Wales you can drive there in less than two hours from Sydney um, it's very different because once you drive south when you pass Wollongong the scenery suddenly becomes very very green and it's almost like the UK it's got really like green rolling hills it's quite unusual I think for Australia Kayama itself is big-ish town so you could definitely have a fun weekend away with friends if you want to go out in the evening there's quite a lot of shops and restaurants and things there's also really nice beaches a really amazing coastal walk as well there's a really famous blowhole as well so definitely go and see that you've also got quite a famous rock formation called cathedral rocks you should go and see i went to quite a few places Bombo Headland as well was really cool and Minamura River you can go and look down on the mouth of the river I've got a really good blog post on that so I'll link to that one Number nine is the Blue Mountains. You can't live in Sydney and not have a trip to the Blue Mountains. It takes about two hours to get there. You can drive or you can also go by train. There's lots of train stations in the different villages in the Blue Mountains, so you don't really need a car. The main town is Katoomba. That has a really long strip of restaurants and shops and things, so that's a really good place to base yourself. Also, Loira is really pretty. That's more of a kind of quaint, quirky little town. The famous rock formation is called the Three Sisters. That's at Echo Point so you should go and see that it is busy though and you get a lot of tourist buses there so it's definitely not going to be a quiet place but there are lots of other places you can go for walks and lots of different walking trails other than the big tourist ones try going to Wentworth Falls that's got lots of walks um, there's loads of amazing lookouts I've got a blog post on all the lookouts that you should go and see I'll link to that the Blue Mountains does tend to get a bit colder than Sydney so if you want to really kind of wintry getaway go in the winter time uh, it does even get snow there so just check the weather before you go Weekend trip number 10 is Barrel or Boral, I don't know how to pronounce that, in the uh, Southern Highlands. So this is a couple of hours south of Sydney, but it's slightly inland. It's just a really lovely area and there's lots of little really quaint old fashioned towns. So Barrel has lovely old cafes and bookshops and antique stores, They're really, really quirky. It's at the foot of a mountain as well, so it's got nice scenery. It also has an annual tulip festival. I went to that once, that was really, really cool. And you can also drive out to Morton National Park, which has Fitzroy Falls, which is quite famous. And you can do some hikes there as well, or go camping. And you can also drive south to Kangaroo Valley, which is very, very picturesque and very popular. Number 11 is Newcastle, which is the second biggest city in New South Wales. It's about two and a half hours north of Sydney. It is a big city, so it will be really good if you want a kind of lively weekend away with friends. It's a beachside city, so it does have great beaches and ocean pools and some coastal walks, but it's also got all the, the big city stuff that you would expect. So restaurants, nightlife, it does have a lot going on. It's really cool. 
if you go there, you should definitely go to the Worry Me Sand Dunes, also known as the Stockton Sand Dunes. It's a really big sand dune system and they're really kind of streaky. They look really, really cool. I went on a day when it was really black clouds overhead and it looked, it looked really amazing. Number 12 is Hunter Valley. This is a little bit inland of Newcastle. It takes about two hours to drive to from Sydney. It's a countryside location. It's got lots of vineyards and it's famous for its wineries. So if you wanna go on a wine tasting tour, that's a great spot. You can also go hiking and do hot air balloon rides. I went to the Hunter Valley Gardens, which was really lovely. And there's also botanic gardens there. If you drive there from Sydney, make sure you take Tourist Drive number 33, which takes you through these really cool little towns. There's one called Laguna, and it's just like, it's like something from the Wild West. It's very, very small, so make sure you look on the map where you need to get off. But yeah, try that out, it's really cool. Number 13 is Kangaroo Valley, which is down the southern end of the Southern Highlands. This takes about two hours to drive to from Sydney. It's a really scenic drive as you wind down into the valley through all the trees. It's quite a quieter place. It'd be good for a, a nature-filled holiday. There's a little strip of really cute heritage buildings with shops and cafes, and there's a river there, so you can go kayaking, and it's just a really nice, kind of pretty, outdoorsy place. Number 14 is Jervis Bay. I think it's pronounced Jervis, not Jarvis. This is in South Coast, New South Wales. It takes about three hours to drive to from Sydney. This is honestly probably one of my top destinations, I would say, in Australia, definitely in New South Wales. It's said to have the whitest sand in the world at Hyams Beach, which is the big famous beach, but it's actually got absolutely loads of beaches. It's, it's a huge, huge bay, and just from the main town, Huskisson down to the National Park, you've got about 13 beaches. I've got all of those in a blog post. And you've got Boudoiree National Park, which has also got amazing beaches, and you can go camping there. And you've got the Beecroft Peninsula to the north, which has got famous Honeymoon Bay and like really big cliffs and a lighthouse. Huskisson, which is the main town, has a strip of restaurants and shops. It's quite small, but it does get busy in the school summer holidays. So if you can go out of season, I would. But the scenery is lovely, and it's um, it's just not very built up. Like for such a popular place, it's still very very forested, and you see kangaroos in people's front gardens. I used to house sit there quite often. Um, it's just beautiful, very tranquil. There's a really lovely kind of energy to it, really, really calm. Number 15 is Boudoiree National Park. So this is part of Jervis Bay, it's just south. Um, but you can go camping in the national parks there. If you're going in the school summer holidays, they actually use a ballot system and you have to basically put in an entry like six months in advance, I think, and then they just pick out people at random because it's so popular. But the beaches there are phenomenal. They're so beautiful and white and it's so just leafy and quiet. There's botanic gardens. There's lots of hiking trails. It's absolutely stunning. I have seen red-bellied black snakes most times I've been there though, so do just be careful. Number 16 is Port Stephens, which is about three hours drive north of Sydney. It's just north of Newcastle. It's a really lovely holiday area. Um, Nelson Bay is the main town with the shops and things and You've just got lots and lots of different bays with really beautiful beaches. It's got these very green little pointed mountains. So it's very different scenery from Sydney. You can do hikes, go up to Tomaree Lookout. That's amazing. You can also go and see the sand dunes that I mentioned that are between Newcastle and Port Stephens. Yeah, it's a really, really great place for a family holiday, I would say. Number 17 is Mile Lakes National Park. This is just over three hours from Sydney. It's just north of Port Stephens. There is kind of a, a big water inlet between the two though, so you can't just cross over easily. I think maybe you can get a ferry. Um, but the National Park is beautiful. I went camping there, so lovely at sunset. And then on the other side of the lakes, um, you've got the ocean. So you've basically got a beach between the lakes and the ocean. So it's just gorgeous scenery. And make sure you go to Tiona. There's a place called the Green Cathedral, which is an outdoor cathedral. It's really cool. It's, it's basically like uh, it's in a forest right next to a lake. And the church pews are like just timber logs. Basically, everything's made out of timber. It's really interesting. I think you can get married there too. It's uh, absolutely beautiful. Number 18 is Bathurst, which is just inland of the Blue Mountains. So that's just under three and a half hours to drive from Sydney. It's quite an old city, so it's got really lovely heritage architecture and it's quite a big city as well, actually. It's got really lovely parks. It's got nice boutique shops. You can head out to Orange as well, which is quite well known. That's got great wineries and some botanic gardens. There's a nice little village that I visited called Millthorpe. You can drive out as well to this place called Sofala, which is like an old, 
a gold mining town and honestly it's like being on the set of a wild west movie <laughs> it's really cool i'll make sure i put some pictures in so you can see it but it's um it's very interesting if you have the time to go and see that do Trip number 19 is Canberra, which is a really, really good place for a weekend getaway from Sydney. It takes about three and a half hours to drive to from Sydney. It's to the southwest. Or you can get the train, which takes about four hours, 20 minutes. That's what I did. Canberra is quite compact, so you can see a lot of things without a car. I mean, you obviously have access to more kind of bushwalks and things if you do take a car, but you can definitely go without one if you just want to catch the train. It's where the Parliament buildings are, so you can go and look around Parliament House. There's a whole sort of triangle, it's called Parliament Triangle, full of all the different buildings, so that's quite interesting to look around. You've got loads of art galleries, you've got really, really good museums. Make sure you go to the National Museum. Um, I'm not a big museum person, but I really found those interesting. It's got a lot about the history of Australia and um, if you want to learn more, lots about the wars and about the Aboriginal history, so it is really interesting. It is colder than Sydney, particularly in the winter. It was about 13 degrees in the day when I went, so make sure you wrap up warm. But um, there's so much to do indoors as well. It would be fine if it was a wet weekend. Go to the Botanic Gardens and you can do a hike up to Telstra Tower. You can pay to go in there and you've got these amazing 360 degree views of Canberra, so definitely go there. And number 20 is Forster, which is about a three hour and 45 minute drive north of Sydney in North Coast, New South Wales. I went there about six months ago and had a really, really good weekend. It's beachside, so you do have a lovely beach. You've got ocean pools. You've also got um, restaurants and cafes. You've got a lovely beachside cafe. And it is just above Mile Lakes National Park that I just mentioned. So you can drive down and see all that amazing scenery, drive down the lakes way. There's also a lake in Forster, so you can go kayaking on there. I stayed at a really, really cool B&B, which I'll link to below, called Palmyra B&B. And it's a newish house, but it's in the style of a heritage building. And it's in these really huge grounds. I think it was only about $100 for a, a twin room. And it's got this lovely, amazing pool, which was really new. Uh, it's just a beautiful building and it had a really nice communal feel. It was like a really traditional style B&B. Everyone was kind of chatting to each other and there was a communal kitchen and they put breakfast on for you. Yeah, that's a really, really great place to stay. Okay, that's it for my top weekend getaways from Sydney. Let me know in the comments if you've got any other destinations that you like going to from Sydney. If you want more ideas for holidays and trips in New South Wales or across Australia, make sure you check out my blog. I've got absolutely loads and loads of destination guides and I've really thoroughly explored the coastline around here. Please give this video a like and subscribe if you enjoyed it for more videos on life in Australia. Thank you for watching.